So in this video, I want to walk you through a two-dimensional kinematics sample problem, as well as show you how to use this table in order to simplify and find any answer that they're asking you for. So Peitch kicks a football at a velocity of 24.5 meters per second. So we know that that's going to be our initial velocity at an angle of 32 degrees. So that's our theta value. If it lands at the same height that it was kicked, and then the problem will go on to say, find the time in the air, find the maximum height. And we'll sort of work through all of that in the problem here. There's one more given that we know that if it says it lands at the same height, then we know that the Y displacement is zero, that the ball comes back to the same height that it began from. So if I draw a picture, I have Peitch here, and he has the football. And if I have this straight line that he's standing on, the football is going to do one of these things and land over here where the y, the y displacement is zero. So when I go to fill in the table, the table is, remember that in a 2D problem, we're really dealing with two different problems. We're dealing with an x problem, and we're dealing with a y problem. The x one is where the ball is moving horizontally across the field here. And the Y problem is the vertical where the ball is coming up and then coming back down again. So my initial velocity I know is 24.5. I know that my angle is 32 degrees. And in order to split this into the X and Y, I have to do the components. So in order to change this up into its VY and its VIX value, remember that I'm going to do 24.5 times the cosine of the angle, 32. And that's going to give me 20.4 meters per second. And for the y value, I'm going to do 24.5 times the sine of the angle, y sine, because x is cosine. And that's going to give me a value of 13.5. Both of those are positive because it's heading in the positive x, heading in the positive y. And now that I've split these into x and y's, I can start talking about what's going on with the rest of the problem. So in the x direction, remember that the only thing acting on it is air friction. And because we don't count air friction, we would say that there is no X acceleration. And then we also know that in the Y direction, we have air friction and gravity. But again, because we don't count air friction, the only thing we would say acting on it is gravity. So it has a negative 9.8 meters per second squared acceleration. We also know that one of our givens is because it lands at the same height, that this Y displacement is zero. So remember that you have to know three different things in order to solve any of those kinematic problems. Looks like I know three of the things on this side. And if I'm looking for time, remember that time is what really connects the X and the Y sides. So whatever the time is that it takes for the ball to get from here to here in the X direction is going to be the same as the time that it takes the ball to go up and down in the Y direction to get to that same point. So looking at these then, I have a certain set of variables. It looks like I'm going to use y equals vit plus one half at squared. My y displacement is zero. My y initial velocity, 13.5. I'm looking for t plus half of the negative 9.8 t squared. So if I simplify that, I'm going to have 0 equals 13.5t minus 4.9t squared. Looks like I can pull a t out and say 0 equals 13.5 minus 4.9t times t. So I know that I have two solutions here. One of those is t equals 0. Well, I already know that the ball is at a displacement of 0 at the beginning, so I'm really not interested in that one. What I want to know is this other one. So if I subtract 13.5 over, divide by the negative 4.9, then I'm going to end up with a time of 2.76 seconds. And so this becomes 2.76 seconds. And remember that the same time that it takes to go up and down is the same time that it takes to go across. So I now know that this is also 2.76 seconds. And from there, it looks like I know three things on this side where now I can find this X displacement and say the exact same equation, X equals VIT plus one half AT squared. But remember, because the X acceleration is zero, that term all cancels out. So I can do X equals 20.4 times 2.76, and that'll give me a total X displacement of 56.2 meters, 56.2 meters. Now, the final velocity becomes a little bit more interesting. So remember that the x acceleration was zero 
which means that in the x direction, the velocity is not changing. So whatever the initial x velocity is, it has to be the final x velocity. So this is also going to be 20.4 meters per second. In the y direction, though, the acceleration is negative 9.8. So when I go to do that, I would have to look at it and say, hey, I have VF equals VI plus AT. I know my initial velocity is 13.5. I know my acceleration is negative 9.8 and it accelerated at that for 2.76 seconds. So when I plug all that in, I get a final velocity of negative 13.5 meters per second. 13.5 meters per second. So when I look at the very end here, I have a velocity that is coming down that is the 13.5. I have a velocity that is coming over that is the 20.4. And I want to take and put those back together again to get the final velocity, which is this guy down at the bottom. So how would I do that? Remember, we're going to use vectors for that. So because I have a right triangle here, since this is a Y and an X, I can do the Pythagorean theorem. So the final velocity is going to equal 20.4 squared plus 13.5 squared square rooted. Throw that in your calculator and you get a final velocity of 24.5 meters per second. So this is 24.5 meters per second. Then to find the angle, I really want to know this angle here because I want to come all the way around to that. So I'm going to do the inverse tangent of y over x, 20.4. I'm sorry, x over y in this case because the opposite over the adjacent. So 20.4 over 13.5 and when I do that I get a theta value of 56.5 and then I would add that to 270 and end up with an angle of 326.5 so this I would say is 327 degrees if I round that to three significant digits again you can do that inverse tangent slightly different if you do the y over x you're finding this angle here and you would uh, either subtract it from 360 if you have a positive value, or if you put the negatives in, then you would add it to 360 so long as you get that entire angle that goes all the way around there. Now, to summarize this table then, what we're going to do, if you turn to the front of your foldable, so flip to the front of your foldable, and you'll see this table on the front of your foldable. So remember that what we did was we took our initial velocity let me get into my pen mode here we took our initial velocity <laughs> it's not letting me write we took our initial velocity here whatever is given to us our vi and our theta and we broke it into components so this will be vi cosine theta this will be vi sine theta then remember that our x acceleration is always zero our y acceleration is always negative 9.8 so you're putting this on the front of your foldable into the box this is sort of the cheat sheet of how to fill out the table and solve any of these problems now depending on what you're given next you're either given x or y or t and you're using those to find the others so remember that your t's are equal so you can put an equal sign between those if you're given the y, you're going to do y equals vit plus one half at squared. Solve for t, plug the t in over here, and then do the same thing over here. x equals vit plus one half at squared to solve for x. Or if you're given x, then you'll plug in your x and your vi, solve for t, use your t to find y. And if you're given your t, you can just solve each of those independently. Now, for the VFX and VFY, you're going to have VIX plus AT. Remember, though, your acceleration in the X direction is zero, so you just get that that VFX is VIX. In the Y direction, it's a little bit different, though, because there is a Y acceleration. You would have to plug in whatever that initial velocity is the negative 9.8 and the time that you got to find what that final y velocity is. And then to put these back together, we would do this Pythagorean theorem, vfx squared 
plus VFY squared. And then remember that we'll do the inverse tangent of the VFX over VFY and add that to 270 to find our degrees. So if you fill this in on the front of your foldable, then this sort of gives you a cheat on how to solve all of these 2D problems based off of the kinematic variables.